Good day, Kid Angels! Welcome to our new learning episode. I am Teacher Nancy B. Pineda, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Before we start today's lesson, kindly prepare your self-learning module, your pen, and paper to write your answers as we progress with our discussion. And most importantly, look for a place in your home where you feel safe and comfortable. Please be reminded that you may comment or ask questions at the comment section below. For this week's lesson, we are expected to use inductive or deductive reasoning in an argument and write a proof, both direct and indirect. There are two important terminologies we need to discover in this lesson, the inductive reasoning and the deductive reasoning. Let us first unlock the inductive reasoning. The inductive reasoning uses specific examples to arrive at a general rule, generalizations, or conclusions. It is a process of coming to a general conclusion from seeing patterns in specific examples and looking for the regularity in those patterns. Note that inductive reasoning is from specific to general. Again, it is from specific to general. And there is a specific pattern that will lead us to the general rule. For example, look at the series of figures given. Observe the patterns that occur in every other figure. Look for patterns. We may induce that all the odd-numbered shapes are all half-shaded circles. Each circle is rotated a quarter turn clockwise from the previous circle. We have the figure 1. For the third figure, the circle was rotated a quarter turn clockwise. And on the fifth figure, the circle was again rotated a quarter turn clockwise from the previous circle. Moreover, we may also observe that the even-numbered shapes are polygons with consecutive odd number of sides and or angles. For figure number 2, we have the polygon has 3 sides and 3 angles. For figure number 4, the polygon has 5 sides and 5 angles. And for figure number 6, the polygon has 7 sides and 7 angles. Again, the even-numbered shapes are polygons with consecutive odd number of sides and or angles. And we also observe that there are 3 small circles in each. The two on the bottom are hollow and the centered one at the top is solid or shaded. So what do you think will be the next figure? So for this, we may conclude that from the patterns that we observe, we may conclude that the next figure will be like this. It is a circle which is half shaded on the right side. Let us move on to another example. Every time Jackie visits her doctor, she receives excellent services. The specific statement is, Every time Jackie visits her doctor, she receives excellent services. The specific statement, every time Jackie visits her doctor, she receives excellent services, shows that the clue word or phrase every time means that there is an existing repeated pattern from Jackie's experience. This statement led us to a conclusion which is, Jackie believes that her doctor offers excellent services. Now let us proceed to the second terminology, the deductive reasoning. Let us define deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning uses basic and or general statements to arrive at a conclusion. The parts of deductive reasoning are First, the hypothesis. It is the statement which is accepted or known at the beginning. And the conclusion. It is the statement drawn from the hypothesis. Unlike inductive reasoning, which is from specific to general, deductive reasoning, on the other hand, is from general to specific. It starts with a generalization in hypothesis form and ends with a specific statement as its conclusion. For example, let us have these statements. Filipinos are hospitable. Annalyn is a Filipino. From the given statement, it generalizes that the whole Filipino community are hospitable. 
and it is considered the hypothesis of the whole argument. Again, the general statement or the hypothesis is Filipinas are hospitable. Moreover, the statement Annaline is a Filipino is a specific example. So from general to specific, we may conclude that Annaline is hospitable. Let us have another example. Each angle of a square is 90 degrees. A, B, C, D is a square. The general statement in this example is each angle of a square is 90 degrees. And the specific statement of this example is A, B, C, D is a square. Thus, each angle of A, B, C, D is 90 degrees. With the given statement each angle of a square is 90 degrees, it presents a general truth about the angles of a square and it is considered the hypothesis of the whole argument. Moreover, the statement ABCD is a square is a specific example. So from general to specific, we may conclude that each angle of ABCD is 90 degrees. It is important to differentiate the two models of reasoning in an argument. The inductive reasoning is from specific to general and there is a specific pattern that will lead us to a general rule. And on the other hand, deductive reasoning is from general to specific. It starts with a generalization in hypothesis form and ends with the specific statement as its conclusion. Now let us answer some drills. Look carefully at the figures. What is next? There are three squares in the given sequence. Each square is composed of six triangles, and there is a shaded triangle on each square. The first shaded triangle is located at the upper left part. The next shaded triangle is at the upper right. The third shaded triangle is at the lower right part. Now, what will be the next pattern, or what will be the next figure? You are right. From the given pattern, we can conclude that the fourth shaded triangle is at the lower left. Let us try this new set of figures. What will be the next figure? As you can see, the first figure is composed of only one dot. The next is a triangular set of three dots. The third figure is a triangular set of six dots. From this pattern, the next pattern should still be a triangular set of dots. Therefore, therefore by continuing this pattern, the next figure will be a triangular set of 10 dots. Let us try this statement. All plants need water. Santan is a plant. What will be the conclusion from this given statement? Let us analyze the given statements. All plants need water is the general rule, while Santan is a plant is a specific example. Therefore, we can conclude that since Santan is a plant, Santan needs water. Let us have another example. All rectangles are parallelogram. A, B, C, D is a rectangle. From the general statement, all rectangles are parallelogram, this statement presents a general truth about parallelogram, and it is considered as the hypothesis of the whole argument. Moreover, ABCD is a rectangle is a specific example. So from general to specific, we may conclude that ABCD is a parallelogram. Now let us proceed to our next lesson, writing proof, direct and indirect proof. To start our lesson, let us define the unfamiliar terms from this lesson. First, we have the proof. A proof is a logical argument in which each statement is supported or justified by a given information, definition, axioms, postulates, theorems, and previously proven statements. Next, we have postulate. A postulate is a statement that is accepted without proof. Next, the theorem. A theorem is a statement accepted after it is proven deductively. Direct proof is a way of showing the truth or falsehood of a given statement by a straightforward combination of established facts, usually axioms and theorems. In writing a proof, it is important for us to master the properties of equality and congruence. 
It is because these are used as bases for a reason in writing proofs. Let's get started. Let us start with the different properties of equality. First, the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality states that for real numbers A, B, C, and D, if A is equal to B and C is equal to D, then A plus C is equal to B plus D. Let us have the next property, the subtraction property of equality. The SPE states that if A is equal to B and C is equal to D, then A minus C is equal to B minus D. Next, we have the multiplication property of equality. For real numbers A, B, and C, if A is equal to B, then A times C is equal to B times C. Next, we have the division property of equality. The division property of equality states that if A is equal to B and C is not equal to 0, then A divided by C is equal to B divided by C. We also have the substitution property of equality. The substitution property of equality tells us if A is equal to B, then A may be replaced with B in any expression. Next, the distributive property. The distributive property states that A multiplied to the sum of B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C. Next, the reflexive property. The reflexive property means that A is equal to A. It means that any real number is equal to itself. Next, the symmetric property of equality. The symmetric property of equality states that if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. And lastly, we have the transitive property of equality. This property of equality states that if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Aside from the different properties of equality, we also have some properties of congruence. These are the reflexive property, the symmetric property, and the transitive property. For reflexive property, we have segment AB is congruent to segment AB. Segment AC is congruent to segment AC. And we also have angle A is congruent to angle A. Just like with the reflexive property of equality, the reflexive property of congruence means that an angle or segment is congruent to itself. Next, the symmetric property of congruence. For the symmetric property of congruence, we have this example. If angle A is congruent to angle B, then angle B is congruent to angle A. And for the transitive property of congruence, if angle A is congruent to angle B, and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to angle C. Let us move on to writing indirect proof. The indirect proof is a method of reasoning usually written in paragraph form. The opposite of the statement given is assumed true until the assumption leads to contradiction. There are different ways to write proofs. We have the paragraph form, two column form, and the flow chart form. The paragraph form is one way of proof where you write a paragraph to explain why a conjecture for a given situation is true. For example, given angle LOE and angle EOV are complementary, prove that LO is perpendicular to OV. To prove that LO is perpendicular to OV, we can say that since angle LOE and angle EOV are complementary, then the measure of angle LOE plus the measure of angle EOV is equal to 90 degrees by the definition of complementary angles. Thus, the measure of angle LOE plus the measure of angle EOV is equal to the measure of angle LOV by angle addition postulate. And the measure of angle LOV is equal to 90 degrees by the transitive property. So, angle LOV is a right angle by the definition of right angles. Therefore, LO is perpendicular 
to OV by the definition of perpendicularity. Now let us move to the second way of writing a proof, the two-column form. This is one way of organizing proof. This consists of two columns. The first column is for the statements and the second column is for the reasons. Let us have an example. The given is the measure of angle SEP is equal to the measure of angle TER. Now prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. To do that, I want you to draw a table with two columns. In the first column, we are going to write the statement. And for the second column, we are going to write the reason for each statement. Now let us prove that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. For the first statement, the measure of angle SEP is equal to the measure of angle TER. The reason is because it is given. For our second statement, the measure of angle SEP is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. And the reason for this statement is the angle addition postulate. For the next statement, the measure of angle TER is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. The reason for this is also by using the angle addition postulate. For the next statement, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. The reason is by using the substitution property. For the fifth statement, we have the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 2. And the reason is by reflexive property. Lastly, we can say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. The reason for this is by using the subtraction property of equality. That is how we write a two-column form or the statement and reason. Now that we are done proving using two-column form, we can now proceed with our last topic that is proving using the flowchart form. The flowchart form is another way of writing a proof where series of statements are organized in logical order using boxes and arrows. Each statement together with its justification is written in a box. Arrows are used to show how each statement leads to another. For example, we have two triangles, the triangle RAC and triangle REC. It is also given that side RA is congruent to side RE and side CE is congruent to side CA. Prove that angle E is congruent to angle A. Listen carefully as I show you the proof for this example. First, let us draw a box and write the first given statement together with the reason inside the box. The statement is side RA is congruent to side RE. The reason is given. Second, let us draw another box and write the second statement including the reason. The second statement is side CE is congruent to side CA and the reason for this is given. Now by looking at the given figure, we can conclude that RC is congruent to RC and the reason is by the reflexive property of congruence. Now, by looking at the three statements, we can observe that there are three pairs of sides congruent to the corresponding sides of another triangle. That is why for the next step, we can draw an arrow for each box pointing to a new box. Inside this box, we will write what we have observed, that is, triangle RAC is congruent to triangle REC with the reason SSS congruence postulate. For this given statement, we can finally say that angle E is congruent to angle A for the reason corresponding angles of congruent triangles are congruent. Again, this is Teacher Nancy, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Until next time, have a nice day and God bless us all.